people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As the January summit of the World Economic Forum gets postponed due to the spread of Omicron coronavirus variant, the virtual event witnessed a host of issues being put forth by leaders from across the world. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi largely focused on cryptocurrencies which he said were required to be dealt with a cautious outlook and a unified approach. He also said that there was an urgent need to improve the supply chain that has been affected by the pandemic and India is ready to provide all assistance in bringing the global economy back on track. In a virtual event of the World Economic Forum last week, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the global economy had hit major roadblocks owing to the pandemic and all countries were required to work in coherence to deal with affected supply chains, inflation and climate change. He also emphasized only a collective effort could deal with the problems posed by cryptocurrencies. India has been mulling virtual currency related regulations that were widely expected to be introduced in the winter session of the parliament in December before being shelved. ये सप्लाई चेन के डिसरप्शन इन्फ्लेशन और क्लाइमेट चेंज इन्हीं के उदाहरण है एक और उदाहरण है क्रिप्टो करेंसी का जिस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी इससे जुड़ी है उसमें किसी एक देश द्वारा लिए गए फैसले इसकी चुनौतियों से निपटने में अपर्याप्त होंगे हमें एक समान सोच रखनी होगी New Delhi has previously flagged that it plans to ban most cryptocurrencies, a move that would follow recent measures by China that intensified its crackdown on cryptocurrencies. India's central bank has also voiced serious concerns around digital currencies, saying that they may impact financial stability. There are an estimated 15 million to 20 million cryptocurrency investors in India with total crypto holdings of around $5.39 billion according to industry estimates. Modi also said that New Delhi was working on removing trade barriers across the world and was in negotiations with several countries for signing the free trade agreements. भारत ने आईटी सेक्टर और बीपीओ से जुड़े आउटडेटेड टेलीकॉम रेगुलेशंस में बड़े रिफॉर्म्स किए साथियों भारत ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेंज में विश्व का एक भरोसेमंद पार्टनर बनने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है हम अनेक देशों के साथ फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट के रास्ते बना रहे हैं India recently announced a start of free trade talks with Britain with the intent of signing a deal by the end of this year. The Prime Minister also said that it was the best time to invest in India because the country was willing to become a more trusted partner in the global supply chain. ऑप्टिकल फाइबर से कनेक्ट किया जा रहा है विशेष रूप से कनेक्टिविटी से जुड़े इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर 1.3 ट्रिलियन डॉलर का इन्वेस्टमेंट किया जा रहा है एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन जैसे इनोवेटिव फाइनेंसिंग टूल्स में 80 बिलियन डॉलर जनरेट करने का लक्ष्य रखा गया है 
डेवलपमेंट के लिए हर स्टेक होल्डर को एक भी प्लेटफॉर्म पर लाने के लिए द पैंडमिक हैज सिवियरली अफेक्टेड द ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी एंड ईच कंट्री इज एंडेवरिंग इट्स ओन मैनर फॉर द रिकवरी Only one in ten World Economic Forum members surveyed expects the global recovery to accelerate over the next three years. A poll of nearly 1,000 business, government, and academic leaders found, with only one in six optimistic about the world outlook. The World Economic Forum's latest report highlights four areas of emerging risk: cybersecurity, a disorderly climate transition. migration pressures and competition in space the report is published each year ahead of the annual wef meeting in davos however the geneva based wef last month postponed the january event until mid 2022 due to the spread of the omicron corona virus variant Moving on, Nepal is witnessing a health staff crisis amidst rising infections in the hospitals, driven by the Omicron variant. The case load has increased by ten times in first three weeks of this month, and many healthcare workers and doctors have contracted the infection. Previous waves had strained the health system of the country, and there are apprehensions that this wave too can deal a heavy blow. The government has several measures to contain the spread, but that hasn't proved effective enough in flattening the curve in past few days. As the third wave of COVID-19 rages across Nepal, the capital city of Kathmandu is witnessing long queues of frontline workers getting themselves tested for the infection. Over 500 doctors and healthcare workers have contracted the infection in just one week, putting a further strain on the health system of the country. In view of these infections causing a staff crunch at hospitals, the government has reduced the isolation period to 5 days. Many others have been isolated at home in order to provide more admission space to common citizens. I think this third wave uh, is going to bring uh, human uh, resources cry a lot because lot of healthcare workers are getting infected day by day. If you look into the data, you know, uh, bigger hospitals of Nepal like Bir Hospital, uh, Teaching Hospital, more than hundreds of uh, healthcare workers are getting infected. So uh, once they have to go for isolations, we don't we will not be having uh, adequate amount of healthcare workers to take care of the patients. Some regional and district hospitals outside Kathmandu Valley too have been hit hard by the infection amongst healthcare workers. Many districts have reportedly been forced to shut operations partially thanks to the limited staff after most of them contracted covid. The Bharatpur Hospital in Chitwan district considered as one of the prime locations hosting large number of doctors and medical students has also isolated majority of its staff. In Nepal even before the covid pandemic the number of human resources stood very less against the population. When the country's population stood at 1 million there were only 1300 doctors in the country and despite a threefold increase in the population the number of doctors remains the same. In, in Nepal uh, even when there was not covid the number of human resources were very less as per the population. If you even if you look into the government side when the population of Nepal was 1 crore we only had 1300 doctors in government sides. and uh, when the population of nepal was 3 crore when the nepal population is 3 crore right now uh, the number of doctors of uh, government doctors are only 1300 so there is no increment in the number of uh, doctors in the government side so now during covid you know uh, the gap between the populations and uh, these doctors has increased more because you know people are getting infected more and more and we have the same number of human resources the current positivity rate of the country is at grim 45% and kathmandu doesn't seem to have a contingency plan if the physicians are hit even harder in coming times in such a scenario it is not left with many options but to follow the standard protocol of containing the spread 
the lockdowns, immunization and now the booster doses. Its economy was severely hit last time around and the daily infection graph seems to suggest a repeat of the same in coming weeks. Moving on, the Taliban, who have so far failed to persuade anybody around the world, have appealed to the governments to legitimize their administration. Acting Prime Minister Mullah Mohammad Hassan Akhund, who held a press conference with UN officials present in the audience, said that the conditions they were asked to meet in the peace process have already been met and they deserve to be part of the international mainstream. However, the Taliban claims do not seem to align with what is transpiring at the ground as not only the ordinary Afghans are reeling under a collapsing economy, but the women who have remained the center of discussion during the entire political debate are finding both their sustenance and civil rights under an everyday expanding crackdown. The Taliban have urged the international community to recognize them and treat them at par with other sovereign countries. Mullah Mohammad Hassan Akhun, the acting Prime Minister and other Taliban administration officials also appealed for a loosening of restrictions on money into the country, blaming freezing of funds the primary reason behind an impending economic collapse. The appeal comes as the country faces a cash crunch and a deteriorating economy pushes millions into poverty in the harsh winter. She amen rarely the be amnati for thy the Holgo Kuruna Namusuna Ayal Mal Tola Mahfuswal Pasad Roxo Hyanat Roxo, Echitap Roxo. The international community has already rammed up humanitarian aid designed to address urgent needs and largely bypass official channels. And this appeal follows the Taliban's demand of playing an active role in the distribution of the international aid promised by the United Nations and the US. The ground reality, however, doesn't confirm the claims of Taliban who say all the evils in the society were present only during the previous regime and they have disappeared with them at the helm of affairs. In a small tailoring workshop in Kabul, 29-year-old Afghan entrepreneur Sohila Nuri looks on as her dramatically reduced workforce of around 30 women sews scarves, dresses and baby clothes. A few months ago, before the hardline Islamist Taliban movement seized power in August, she employed more than 80 people, mostly women, across three different textile workshops. Uh, with Afghanistan's economy deep in crisis, billions of dollars in aid and reserves have been cut off and ordinary people have little money even for basics. Enterprises like Nouri's are struggling to stay afloat. Making matters worse, the Taliban will only allow women to work subject to their interpretation of Islamic law prompting some to leave jobs out of fear of punishment by a group that severely restricted their freedom the last time it ruled. Hard-won gains in women's rights over the last two decades have been quickly reversed and reports from international rights experts and labor organizations this week 
painted a bleak picture for female employment and access to public space. Though the economic crisis is hitting the entire country, some agencies predict it will leave almost the entire population in poverty in the coming months. The effect is disproportionately felt by women. سابق ما زیاد کار داشتیم قرار دادیا داشتیم بدون از اجور دوزی زیاد داشتیم میتونستیم به استادا ماش بتیم برای همکارای ما کار میکدن ماش بتیم فعلا همون نیست Afghan women's employment levels fell by an estimated 16% in the third quarter of 2021, according to a report released by the International Labour Organization for Afghanistan on relative to 6% for men. According to the labour organisation, women's employment was expected to be 21% lower than it was before the Taliban takeover by mid-2022 if current conditions continued. Amid all this, it appears highly unlikely that Taliban are getting any extraordinary concessions from the international community, let alone the recognition of a legitimate government. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Manila's local government opened up its zoo past week as a vaccination center for minors and the elderly. It is being used as a means of encouraging them to get vaccinated while being entertained by animals. A thousand COVID-19 injections will be allocated per day for minors is 12 to 17 years old and senior citizens, according to authorities. Daily coronavirus infections have hit record several times in the Philippines this month, driven by the highly contagious Omicron variant, prompting a tightening of mobility curbs. The country has so far fully inoculated half of its population, but many areas outside the capital region are lagging behind. Local residents and Iraqis from across the country gathered in public parks in the northern town of Soleimania to enjoy the snow that blanketed the Kaldish town. Schools and public institutions remained closed in the city due to the difficult transport conditions, allowing children to spend time outdoors, build snowmen and hold snowball fights. The city center had not witnessed such snowfall in years. Snow usually falls in the mountains surrounding the city during winter. Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station has to inevitably discharge advanced liquid processing system treated water into the sea. Professor Tadashi Narabayashi is an expert of nuclear engineering. え、Fukushima Power Station's future is a huge global concern. Decommissioning should be done carefully while referring to the opinions of experts and other cases in the world. Tokyo Electric Power Company or TEPCO is progressing its plan to discharge advanced liquid processing system treated water into the sea from its Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station in the near future. 
the water contains tritium which cannot be removed. How does the diluted ALPS treated water impact the human body? The experts explain it. え、ほぼ除くことができて、トリチウムの影響だけを考えればいいという状況に、ま、処理水の段階ではできるというふうに、あの、判断をしています。今の自然界にあるトリチウムの総量と比べれば、やっぱり見けた避けた低い、え、量
people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.